Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today as always I've got an interesting Astro topic for you guys. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Um, over the years I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories in that account and guess what? Here's a couple of other scopes for you guys to consider. All right, guys, so this is kind of, you know, bringing me back a few years, kind of making me, you know, get all emotional and nostalgic and stuff like that. One of the first videos that I made uh, was actually because, you know, I volunteered at the time, especially a lot with my astronomy club, and people always ask me a lot, you know, about, like, what scope I'd recommend for their first telescope. And I made a, made a video way back when, uh, probably about five years ago now, um, one of my first ones on YouTube, you know, kind of, like, giving my recommendation for the for first scope. And that was the Celestron Nexstar 6SC. Well, guess what? These two guys here, the EVO 6 and the EVO 8, are basically the upgraded, better models of that same telescope. All right, you guys, the future is here. The evolution models of telescopes. Okay, I'm just kidding. These guys have been out for a while already. But what are the differences with the Nexstars that I kind of recommended, you know, previously? And these models of telescopes. Well, really, guys, there's, you know, three main differences. Uh, so the first one, as you can see here, is they do have Wi-Fi built in now. Uh, so what's cool about that is that you could take, you know, either your cell phone, your smartphone, I mean, or a tablet, whether it be a Mac or a um, Android one, and you could control it with the app, with the Planetarium software. I'm posting in a screenshot of what that looks like right now which makes it much nicer to control. Otherwise, uh, with the Nexstar, you can get a, a wireless gizmo. Uh, it's called a SkyFi to control it. Uh, otherwise, you would have to use, you know, just the keypad. And this is actually not too bad to do because, you know, like after you get it aligned, which we'll kind of touch on later, you just hit deep, deep sky objects or, you know, whatever type of objects you want. Punch it in there on the little screen. Um, a little bit more archaic, but it does work. Uh, the Wi-Fi, I will say, does make it you know a lot nicer to use. Uh, okay, next uh, difference is, and this is honestly my favorite difference, is that this thing does have clutches built in now. So this knob here, right, kind of loosen it. You can move the scope manually wherever you want. Tighten it up. Boom, it's good to go. So the Nexstar series mounts, while it does appear similar, you know, physically, it does not have clutches at all. Um, and we'll kind of get in, I'll touch on a little bit why that's, you know, can be important. Not crucial, but can be important. And last but not least, I can't really even show you this thing, but it does have a battery built in somewhere inside of, you know, the, you know, the mount itself. So I find that to be incredibly cool because, you know, that way, let's see here, where is it? Boom. You know, you just flip a switch. I don't have anything connected to the scope and you could power for hours and hours on end. Um, I'll post in right now, like what the rated battery uh, life is. I mean, I've used this for a couple of nights in a row for probably like three nights in a row um, with, you know, just kind of a couple hour sessions lasts you just fine. I mean, unless you're going to a star party for like a week or something like that. Um, I think the battery life that's built in is just fine. All right, guys. And so while I have the camera kind of pointed at the scopes, uh, so I talked about the main differences. There's a couple of other differences, like it does have a couple more auxiliary ports, you know, built in, so that's kind of cool. It does have USB. You know, depending on what you're doing, that could be significant. For most applications, it's not. Uh, so those are kind of the main differences. So what is similar between these and the next stars, right? Like what's, what's similar? These scopes, the actual telescope itself, whether it's the six model or the eight model, they are identical. There's nothing different, you know, uh, of to them besides the color scheme. You know, these are silver. The next stars are uh, that orange paint. You know, it just kind of depends what you prefer. I honestly don't really know which one I prefer. I kind of like both of them. Optics wise, they are exactly the same. There's no difference. They both have the XLT codings. Uh, most of the newer ones, if you get the newer models of the next stars, they are faster compatible. So you could uh, take out the secondary there and run the camera at F2 with a HyperStar unit. Uh, so again, the tube itself, guys, 
the, the telescope itself. Besides the color scheme is absolutely identical. Okay. Now I did not look up if there is like a technical like superiority to the mount, you know, as far as you know the carrying capacity or whatever. These do feel a little bit beefier. Um, honestly, for like your average use, if you're just using it for visual or for so let's say for like you know intro like astrophotography of the plants or something like that, really I don't see too much of a difference with the mount itself. I mean they both you know the next star and the Evo mounts they both work to me very similarly. Alrighty guys, now that I gave you that brief overview of what the difference is between the next star series and the Evo series of telescopes, what do I think about them? You know, again, I've used these guys for a little bit. Um, do I feel any differently about recommending these compared you know, to how I recommended the next star series? Absolutely not guys. In fact, I kind of would recommend these even over the next stars for your first intro level telescopes. Uh, six inch versus eight inch. Well, I will post in the link to my original video. I, I, I will, I did talk a lot more in depth about different telescope designs, just um, the, you know, the difference between the six and the eight inch a lot deeper in that video. So if you have not seen that video, if you're kind of newer to astronomy, you're really kind of just starting to do research into telescopes, guys, I encourage you to check out that video. You know, I look a little bit younger and a little bit skinnier in there. So yeah, just check it out. There's a lot of good information in there. All right, but just in case you don't want to watch that whole video, uh, what do I think about the six inch versus the eight inch? Overall, guys, I would still recommend the six inch, uh, not because you know like the six inch is much smaller and lighter. Believe it or not, the six inch OTA, the actual tube itself, because the mount, you know, the worst weighs the same. These mounts are identical. The, the the bigger scope doesn't come with like a more beefier mount. So mounts are identical. This OTA only weighs about two and a half pounds less. So what's the difference, you know, like why would I recommend the six versus eight? Well, check out this video, guys. So if you wanna make or use a two inch accessories, right? Unfortunately, with the evil mount, just like the next star mount, you cannot uh, slew all the way to zenith, you know, to objects pointed, you know, more or less all the way up because your diagonal will hit the mount, unfortunately. So I consider that to be kind of a big bummer, like the uh, six inch does not suffer for now. Does the eight inch give you a better performance? Yes, it does. It gathers almost twice the light. Um, overall though, guys, I think, you know, uh, this can still work uh, as a grab and go telescope. So like for me personally, I could grab this whole thing, mount and everything carry it out the back door with the eight inch. It is a little bit tougher just because it's bigger and bulkier. Um, so overall, like if I had to choose one for myself, just as an overall scope, I'd do the six inch. Again, if you are kind of like unsure and want like more of a description of that, check out my old video. But generally speaking, you know, the CA and the C6 OTAs, I mean, they have been around forever. I mean, the Celestron has probably been making them for, I don't know, like God, like, like 40, 50, maybe even 60 years. So they're not new. These do have the newest coatings. Uh, these are not the Edge HD optics. So the Edge HD is the newest versions of these. They do have a uh, basically a field flattener built in, so it's better for astrophotography. For most application guys, I mean, you're really not going to care too much. Um, if it's the Edge HD. Uh, all the new OTAs that I've tried, they do have very sharp, op sharp optics. Contrast is good. Uh, I have not really encountered very many of them that have collimation issues with keeping the alignment of the optics. They're all pretty solid these days. So tubes on these, whether you get the Nexstar or the Evo, I mean, again, they're the same, just different color. They're good performing telescopes. Uh, performance of the mounts, I mean, guys, uh, overall, uh, if you have like, you know, any kind of lower power, I guess, like, say like even a 26 millimeter plosso, these mounts are plenty accurate enough to place the object within the field of view, you know, like even after a pretty long slope. So pretty impressed with the performance. I do really like uh, the fact that they do have Wi-Fi built in. I use astronomy apps like Sky Safari a lot, and you know, you can use the Wi-Fi with that to kind of, you know, point the telescope at different objects. It makes it a lot more convenient, a lot easier. All right, and so on the, uh, the, the, the other big difference, like I mentioned, is that these do have clutches built in. You might be like, well, why would I care about that? I mean, if you're using GoTo, uh, well, if you're using the go-to, right, the clutches are kind of useless because if you loosen the clutches while your scope is aligned, well, your alignment is lost. I mean, you'll have to redo the 
alignment process. But what is really cool, like imagine this, let's say you have the six inch or maybe even this, uh, the eight inch model and you just wanna carry it out your back door to take a quick look at Jupiter, right? With the next star uh, series mounts, you have absolutely no option of, you know, just like kind of, you know, like moving the telescope without powering on. With this, you know, I could carry it out, say the moon's out, right? Let's say I don't want to bother with doing the alignment and stuff, because it does, you know, it takes a few minutes. Uh, after you've done it, uh, you know, a few times, it doesn't take more than like three minutes, but still, it takes some time. Uh, with this, you know, you just loosen the clutches, you can manually point the scope, let's say the moon, you take a quick look you're done or let's say you're trying to gauge how good the scene is you know you take a quick look you're done you carry the scope back inside boom good to go so overall guys would i recommend these telescopes do i enjoy using them absolutely guys and actually pretty soon um if you kind of want to get like more of an advanced use of these i'm going to make a video about using one of these for eaa which is electronically assisted astronomy which is where you use a camera instead of an eyepiece so look forward to that video again guys if you do have any questions or comments or anything like that if i didn't cover something that you're specifically interested in post the comment that then below uh, again if you're not subscribed please do consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye